All right. Thanks everybody for showing up. This is August meeting. Um, we have Tom remoting in all the way from Washington State just to tell us about how to do uh, some work between Civil Dirty and Rivet. Uh, take it away, Tom. All right. Let me see if I can get my screen share here. Can you see that? Yep. Awesome, great, thank you. All right, name of class is, whoa, go back. Uh, together we can do so much, uh, Civil 3D and Revit collaboration. This is a kind of a sneak peek of the class that I'm doing for Autodesk University 2021. So let's get started. Uh, who am I? My name is uh, Tom Richardson. I'm a CAD manager and associate at MWM Design Group in Austin, Texas. I'm also an Autodesk University speaker. I was one of the top 50 speakers for AU 2020 last year. Uh, hoping to uh, have a good showing this year as well. And I am an Autodesk expert elite. And I am also part of the Autodesk Group Network as a part of the Austin CAD Users Group, uh, which all you guys are attending right now. I'm also a disc golf player, I'm very amateur. And if you are a disc golf player, I am a right hand, backhand uh, is my preference. So we'll get started. What we will cover today is uh, setting up a shared coordinate system using the shared reference point tools and Civil 3D and Revit. There are multiple ways to set up shared coordinates. The one I'm going to cover is just the one that uses the shared reference point tools. We'll also be using a shared coordinate system to link Civil 3D drawings and Revit models. We will be publishing a Civil 3D surface to BIM 360, and then we will link the published surface into uh, our Revit model as topography. That's what we will be covering today. Uh, what we will not be covering today is how to create base files in Civil 3D and models in Revit, a little bit outside of the scope of this presentation. Uh, we will not cover how to download and install the shared reference point add-ins. Uh, we will not cover how to set up uh, collaboration views in Revit. Uh, I may touch on them just a little bit, but it's not going to be a full walkthrough of how to create them. And I'm not going to show you how to create surfaces in Civil 3D. So there's, those are all prerequisites uh, for this presentation. I do have a Revit model. And it's just going to be based on uh, project internal coordinate system in the beginning. I have some civil 3D project drawings that are based on the survey coordinates. And I have installed the shared reference point for Autodesk Revit, which you can download and install from the autodesk.manage.com website. And I've installed the shared reference point for Autodesk Civil 3D uh, tool as well. And finally, for the sharing surfaces through BIM 360, you will need a BIM 360 design license and you'll need uh, permissions for a BIM 360 project to be able to uh, post and access those files. So we'll get started with uh, setting up a shared coordinate system. Uh, part one, we're going to do in Revit. And in Revit, what we do is we create a collaboration view for export, basically just a site plan with certain things turned on and turned off so that when we bring it into our CAD drawing file, we can position it uh, in relation to the existing boundary or other content that we've already started creating. We will then create an export setup that will use internal coordinates and foot for units. Uh, typically, architects like to just export to CAD, click OK, and boom, done. And it's using it, the internal coordinates and it's using um, inches. But it's very simple for them to create this export setup and export it in foot. So everything is in the units that we're 
typically working in, in the civil industry. And then we will export that model to DWG for format using the export setup that we just created. And uh, one thing that's very helpful um, in order to do this reference coordinate or to use the shared reference coordinate tool, you have to have two points that you're going to pick in Civil 3D. And you have to pick the exact same two coordinates in the Revit model. So it's a good idea for the architect or whoever is exporting the Revit model to identify those points um, with uh, an emulator or a text or something, or even if it's, uh, hey, we're gonna go grid. And in today's case, I'm gonna go from grid J1 to grid A1. So where those grid lines intersect, those are my two points that we're gonna use for the coordination. So once we get done with the Revit part, we're going to jump over to Civil 3D. And I like to draw ortho lines in the initial exported drawing uh, that represent the Revit internal coordinate system. And uh, if we get time at the end, I'll talk about um, ways that I use those ortho lines uh, to help when you're maybe struggling with uh, the coordination back and forth uh, for a uh, Revit model into Civil 3D and vice versa. Uh, then the next thing we'll do is to position the Revit model within the project site. Uh, typically, we would have a boundary line in the that's in the exported Revit model, and we're going to align that with the boundary in our uh, site plan in our CAD files. And then we will use the Autodesk Shared Reference Point tool to create uh, what's called a, it's a ref point XML file, and that's going to um, give Revit the information it needs to set up the shared coordinate system based on the drawing files that you're using. Uh, I will say that um, the Revit model, some architects will set the level, like they'll usually have like a level one, which is your base floor plan. And sometimes they'll set it to, like in this case, uh, I wanted it to be an elevation of 757 for my finished floor. But the Revit model has level one to be elevation zero or Z value of zero. So if there is a discrepancy and when you later bring in the topo surface and you're like, oh my goodness, it's not coming in at the right spot, it's going to be because of this Z value. So if you know, uh, for sure, if you've tried this and, and you had an issue, it, go ahead and adjust that Z value to whatever elevation that that um, finished floor that they're dropping it in on or that they're connecting it to. Uh, if you set the value in this XML file, which you can edit through Notepad, as you see here, it's just an ASCII uh, file. But you can uh, you can edit that value so that later on the when you bring the uh, surface in through BIM 360, it'll have the uh, the elevations of the model will be correct. All right, and then part three, we're going to go back into Revit, and we're going to create what I call a collaboration view uh, for establishing the shared coordinate system, which uh, for me, if in the case of Today's presentation, I am using grid lines for my two points that I'm selecting. So I'm going to hide everything in that view except for the grid line. So I just call it grid view. And then I'm going to use the uh, import shared coordinate tool within Revit to import the XML that was created by Civil 3D. And it's going to prompt me to pick the same two points that I picked in Civil 3D, which is basically the origin point and uh, what it, what's called up or quasi north. Uh, so basically, whatever kind of Revit thinks is north, you want to try to pick the points in that direction. And then finally, the one that I typically forget is set the imported shared coordinate system as current. Uh, that's the step that I often forget. So let's uh, see a demo of that. a whole lot of stuff all at one time. We'll start with our Revit model. And 
here. Okay, can you see Revit now? Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so the first step we said in Revit was to create the collaboration view. And so I've created that. Uh, typically, I would start with something like the site plan, which already has the boundary and some other content that I want to use. And I'm going to export that. Uh, so I made a copy of it, created the export site plan. And you'll see that I've turned some things on and off uh, to make it more useful to me in terms of what I want to see in a civil plan. Uh, so you can see I've got columns, so that's the little circles here. I've got the grid lines for uh, selecting the points, and uh, there's some overhanging uh, stuff here. Uh, there's some striping that they put in. Uh, there's a deck here. So anyway, doors, that kind of stuff. So I've kind of uh, used the visibility graphics to pick and choose what I want to see in this view. And so I've got that. Now I want to export this view, even though it's just internal coordinates, I'm going to export this view so that we can bring it into CAD to do the collaboration part. So I'm going to go to File, Export, CAD Formats, DWG. Now by default, it's going to say In Session Export Setup. So that's what it's going to start with. So I'm going to click these three dots here. and what we typically get from architects is whatever these settings are, they just click next and go and call it good. Uh, but this two extra little steps here, uh, you can see I already have them already have them created here. So I'll go ahead and remove these so we can create them from scratch. And I have a, a backup copy in case it doesn't work. And I'm going to start with this end session, which is the only thing you'll see in the list, uh, typically the only thing you'll see in the list uh, unless they've added it to their template. And I'm going to uh, make a copy of this one. So I'm going to duplicate this export setup and I'm going to call it units underscore internal dash foot. So this just tells me it's internal units and the uh, distance unit is going to be foot. So I'm going to click OK, make sure that one is highlighted. I'm going to go to units and coordinates. I'm going to set that to foot and make sure this is set to internal origin. Then I'm gonna click okay. Now you can see that I've created an export setup and I'm gonna click next. It's gonna ask me where I want to export this. And typically what I'll do is use the name of the file, but I'm gonna add that internal dash foot so that I know that this drawing is on the internal coordinate system and the units are set to foot. Click OK. Yes, I want to replace. And then I'm going to let the uh, let the civil uh, team know that this is going to be my origin point. That's the J1. And then this is going to be my um, kind of the rotation point. But they do have to be exactly, you want the same distance horizontally when you pick those two points. So you can't just pick this point and then snap to nearest on that. You won't get the, it's not, not the same result or you may not get the same result. Okay, now I'm going to switch over to Civil 3D. And I'm in my proposed site plan. And right now the only thing in here is an extra of the existing site plan. And I need to bring in the uh, the AutoCAD drawing that was exported. Uh, let me, sorry, let me export that one more time to make sure that I get it into a new folder here. Export DWG, unit central foot. Make sure where I was putting that. Okay, yep, I, it's, it's in the right spot. Okay, go ahead and cancel that. So the way that our uh, workflow is set up, I'm, I'm currently working on um, the local drive for all the stuff you're seeing right now. It works the same way if you're working on BIM 360. So where I exported the architectural uh, drawing file is gonna be right here. So it's in a shared folder. 
and the architect would have read write permissions to this folder, uh, the civil team would have read only permissions. So I'm going to take this because I'm not supposed to make changes to this file and I'm going to copy that. And I'll go back into the civil folder and I have consumed arch and I'm going to make a folder with today's date. Now, BIM 360, you can overwrite these files. It'll keep uh, the backup uh, copy. You can always revert to a previous version. Uh, but uh, when I'm working on a local drive, I tend to do separate folders so that I can keep track of the progression. All right, so this is the file that I got directly from uh, the architect. So I'm going to go back into Civil 3D, and I'm going to open that file. So I'm in civil, consumed, arch, today's date. And this is the internal foot drawn. And if you want, you can go in here and uh, get more detailed about, I don't need this hatch and I don't need all these internal doors and whatever else that uh, you want to do, but that's, uh, that's a separate class. Uh, so in order to identify the internal origin. I'm just going to draw, uh, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer, a non-plotting layer. Excuse me. I'm going to, I'm going to create a non-plotting layer. In this drawing at uh, zero, zero. So draw a polyline. Zero comma zero is my start point. And a um, little trick you can do, you'll see my ortho is not on. I can just hold down the shift key and it'll give me an ortho line. So I'm just going to pick a point that's outside. I'm going to start another line, another P line from that same location. Again, I'm going to hold shift and click that line. So that's going to be my origin line and I can always uh, freeze that as needed or whatever. And like I said, there's some additional uses we can uh, do with that origin later on. If we have time, I'll cover that. So I'm going to save this drawing and I'm going to close it. I'm going to go back to my P site drawing. And the next thing is to position the Revit model into CAD. Uh, anytime I'm going to uh, do uh, like an align, a, an insert, a move, a rotate, something like that. I want to make sure that my Z values are always at zero. So I'm going to set O snap Z to one. O snap Z at the command line, press enter, type one and press enter. And O snap Z, um, it, it sounds backwards. If I set it to one, then it's always zero. If I set it to zero, then it's infinity is, is what it is. So O snap of one means there's one value that's used for all Z values. So that's why I want OSNAP Z set to one. Now I'm going to go into my XRF manager. I'm going to attach this internal foot. So that's the one that has the internal units and it's set to foot. And I'm going to click OK. And it's going to be in Never Never Land because it's at zero, zero. So I'm going to undo. I'm going to insert it again. And this time I'm going to check this specify on screen. I'm going to click OK and I'm just going to click a point uh, so that it's uh, somewhere in the right area. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to use the align command. So at that endpoint to that endpoint and that endpoint to that endpoint. Enter, enter. And now I have the correct location for my building. Uh, but I don't want to have to do that every time I get a new drawing. And that's where the shared reference uh, coordinate system uh, comes into play. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go to the tool space in toolbox. And it's the uh, subscription extension manager. I'm going to expand that. I'm going to expand the Autodesk shared reference open that up one more reference point. And then if you uh, go one level deeper, you'll see that this is the Autodesk reference point 
a shared reference point. There we go. Uh, shared reference point for Autodesk Civil 3D. So I'm going to right click on that tool and use execute. And at the command line, it's going to ask me for the origin point. And this is the same thing that Revit is going to ask for. So I'm going to do uh, a parent intersection of this line and that line. So it's the two grid lines. And then I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to do the same thing, a parent intersection of this grid line and that grid line. And yes, I could snap to center, but I don't know that for sure that center is at that insertion point. And that's why I'm doing the apparent intersection. Yeah, it will always default to meters. So you will have to select foot for your units. And it's the units of your, your current drawing. So select drawing units, and that's why we're selecting foot because that's what's in use in this drawing. I'm gonna click OK. It's gonna ask me, where do you want to save that? So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go to my project folder, shared, civil, and we have an XML folder. So I'm just gonna overwrite the one that's here and it's the project number underscore shared coordinates. Now, whatever this file name is, that is the, the name that will be used for your shared reference coordinate system. So if you leave it the default, which is like ref point or something like that, then your shared coordinate system is gonna be called ref point, which isn't very helpful, uh, but you can call it survey coordinates or whatever makes sense for you and your project. I'm gonna click save. Uh, in this case, yes, I wanna replace it. And uh, so the next thing is that Z value. So I'm gonna go find the, uh, let's see, we're at the project folder, shared civil XML. And here's my shared coordinates XML. I'm just gonna right click uh, and you can do, mine is set up to edit automatically, but you can also do open with and you can pick notepad. And here's my file and you'll see that it's zero by default. So I believe we had it at 757 and I'm going to save this file and I'm gonna close it. Why is that? So now we're done in Civil 3D. So we're gonna go back to Revit and we're going to create a uh, collaboration view. So this is the one that I was saying earlier that I, I just freeze everything except the grid. Uh, in this case, and I'm showing the, the project base point. Uh, that's not necessary, but it just helps me see that, okay, yeah, those polylines I drew look about right. All right, the tool that I need is in the add-ins ribbon, and it's this shared reference point. I wanna import shared coordinates from XML file. So I'm just gonna left click on that. And it's not very helpful, but if you look down here, it's gonna say select origin point to align. So I'm gonna look for that J1. So that's this point here. And then it's asking me to select a point on the plus Y or the up direction to align it. And that's where I'm gonna go up to this A1. So same thing, I'm gonna to snap to that intersection. Then it's gonna ask for the file. So this is the file we exported and made the modification and you can see the time looks about right. So I'm gonna click open and it's gonna say, are you sure you wanna create this new coordinate system? Yes, I do. And it's successfully created. Now this is the part I always forget because I think, okay, I created the shared coordinate system. I can just go export the file and, and it's gonna be good to go. And that's incorrect. <laughs> so as soon as I import the shared coordinate system, I go directly to the manage ribbon, go to location, go to the site tab, and you'll see there's the file that we imported and I'm going to make it current. And the reason that you have to do that is because as you can see, you can have multiple coordinate systems uh, within uh, this project. Uh, one of them is internal by default, but you can have uh, a reference coordinate system for one building or another building or whatever. So you wanna make sure that you set the one that you just imported 
uh, before proceeding. I'm gonna click OK. And we are done with setting up the shared coordinate system. Uh, we would just need to save. So I'm gonna go ahead and save. And this Revit model is actually on BIM 360. So you'll see it's not taking very long. It's a pretty small model. All right, save was successful. Let's go back to PowerPoint and we are done with our demo and we are ready to use the uh, shared coordinate system. So to use the shared coordinate system, we will start in Revit. And the first thing we're gonna do is set the shared coordinate system. Um, as you saw, when we set the shared coordinate system, there was an option to rename the uh, coordinate system or the at that in that dialogue if you need to. Next thing we'll do is create another collaboration view uh, for exporting the drawing. And you can use the same one from earlier since we already had it set up, we're just going to use the same one. We are going to create another export setup. This time we'll use shared coordinates instead of internal coordinates. And then we'll export the model uh, to drawing format, uh, DWG format using the shared coordinates. Then we'll go back to Civil 3D. And in the project base file, we're going to overlay the uh, DWG export and it should drop in in exactly the right spot. And then we'll update our project base files with current data from the Revit model export. And then we're gonna export our project base files uh, back into Revit. And then we'll go back to Revit, confirm the shared coordinate system is set. Um, and then we're going to link the Civil 3D exported CAD drawings to Revit. Um, and when you do this, it's very important to make sure that on the positioning that you use auto shared coordinates, not internal coordinates, because obviously there are two different coordinate systems right now. And on the uh, place at, you can pick what level to set that to. Um, and the architect is going to be the one that determines that. But typically it would be like level one or uh, whatever kind of that base finish floor elevation is going to be. And then you're going to uncheck the correct lines. And the reason we do that is because Revit, if it, if you have, say, like a survey property line and it's almost perpendicular but not quite, Revit will try to fix that for you and make it exactly perpendicular, which you do not want to do. So anytime you're bringing in Civil 3D files, you want to make sure to uncheck the correct lines uh, that are slightly off axis. Uh, and then uh, uncheck the oriented view if it happens to be checked. Uh, when you're done, it should bring in, everything should work great. When you save uh, your Revit file, go to close it. At some point you might be prompted to uh, save the coordinates back to the linked CAD file. Um, I will say when you're linking the Civil 3D file into Revit, always link a copy of the Civil 3D file, not the actual Civil 3D file, because when you do this step three, you're going to basically take a drawing that's on survey coordinates and it's going to change the coordinate system so that it matches the internal coordinate system of the Revit model. So then you can just bring it in and you don't have to worry about shared coordinates or anything, um, but you don't want to do that to the original file that uh, was exported from Civil 3D. And that's why we have our permission such that uh, the architects would only have read-only access to those civil 3D files. All right, let's see a demo of that process. So again, we're going to start in Revit and we're going to confirm that the shared coordinate system is set correctly. It is current, so we're good there. And we're going to create the collaboration view for export. In this case, we're gonna use this same one and we're gonna create the export setup. So again, we're gonna to go to File, Export, CAD Formats, DWG, and click the three little dots here. 
And I'm going to start with this unit's internal foot. So if there's any other changes I made, uh, they'll carry across. And I'm going to duplicate that export setup. And I'm going to rename it so that instead of internal, it uses shared coordinates. Now, renaming it only renames it. You have to go into this units and coordinates tab and change the coordinate base to shared coordinates. Is the only change you have to make from that original one that we created. I'm going to click OK, click Next. And again, I'm going to export. This time I'm going to call it shared foot. I'm going to click OK. Uh, in this case, yes, I do want to overwrite. And we're done in Revit. I'm going to go back to Civil 3D. And I'm going to detach the previous drawing. To extent. Where did my cat file go? Not sure why that's there, but okay. So this is the, the X site. And I'm going to, uh, well, first I have to make the copy because I don't want to uh, take it directly from the shared folder. So shared arch, uh, this is the shared foot drawing. So I'm going to copy that, go back to the civil project folder, consumed arch, uh, today's date, and I'm going to paste it here. And again, you can go in and um, create the ortho lines. So we'll do that real quick. And that way they're, they're ready to go for later. Save and close. Back in my proposed site plan, I'm going to attach, get that shared foot drawing. And this time, I'm going to uncheck the specify on screen and click OK. And you'll see that the drawing drops in exactly where it's supposed to. So even if they move the building around in relation to the property line, it will still drop in where they think it's going to be in relation to the property line. So any changes to uh, the outside dimensions of the building, you'll have this overlay that you can reference. All right. So let's do um, let's say we did some work on this drawing and uh, drew in some curb and gutter and whatever else is going to be on this site. And I believe I have a copy of that file. Yeah, right there. So this is the line work that we took from the architecture drawing and created our own site. So I'm gonna go ahead and detach detach that. So this would be our proposed site plan. And I'm going to go ahead and save this drawing. So this is the information I want to get back to the Revit model. Uh, typically what I would do is make a copy of this drawing and detach all the XRFs and send them individually so that they don't um, uh, don't like if you bring in one drawing and it has a bunch of XRFs and they don't have all those XRFs, when you um, share that with them, it, it kind of gives them some, some issues on their end. Uh, so let me go ahead and undo. And you'll see that once I got rid of the X site, we really didn't have anything for reference. Uh, so what I'm going to do is in what would be a copy of this proposed site plan, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do an in copy or a nested copy. Uh, press enter three times. And that way I had the boundary, uh, the original survey boundary in this drawing. 
So when I detach, now this boundary is going to be in the X site as well as the P site to send over to the Revit model. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Oh, uh, let's see. Yep, yeah, I've overlaid it. Okay, so what I just did was updating the base files, and uh, now we're going to do the export the project base file. So I'm just going to export this one. I'm going to go to uh, the C uh, icon up there, do export, export civil 3D drawing. And it's going to be AutoCAD. Uh, you can leave the extras if you want and just tell it to ignore. Uh, and I do not include the sheets in the export settings. I have it set to uh, 2018 format. You can also export feature lines as 2D. Um, if uh, if that makes more sense in it and it really does help Revit folks if you're sending uh, files to Revit you want to send anything that's 2D as a 2D file so that they can move it and anything that's at 3D in a separate file because when they try to say move something up to an elevation of zero or 757 if part of your drawing is at 757 and part of it is at zero they're not going to be able to see everything together. So if you do uh, export the features as 3D, you would want to make sure that it's uh, that everything in that drawing is 3D, not just the feature lines. So we'll go ahead and export feature lines as 2D, even though there's none in this drawing. Going to pick my uh, file location. So shared. Make new folder. Oh, hold on, that's the wrong folder. Shared, civil, there we go, base files 2D. Okay. AutoCAD 2018, I usually add that to the as a prefix to anything I export to AutoCAD. I'm going to export the file. And click OK and then cancel. Now the part three, I'm gonna go back to Revit. And fingers crossed, we've confirmed that the location, uh, the shared reference coordinate is set. That is correct. So now I'm going to uh, go back and do basically the reverse uh, from earlier is I'm gonna go to shared civil 2D base files. And uh, this is my current file that I exported. So I'm going to copy that file. I go back into the Arch folder. Uh, and I don't have one yet here. So I'm going to make one called consumed. And I consume this from the civil team. And if you want to do separate dates, uh, like say on BIM 360, I just overwrite the file. Um, but I typically will copy it or download it to my local and make some edits there before I upload and overwrite. So that's the file. Uh, I'm going to go to Manage Links, CAD Formats, Add. Uh, and this was on the Manage Ribbon tab also. And let's go find the Arch consumed, oops. But you can't see the link CAD formats. Let me hit that again. I'm gonna click add. And I'm going to go to the project folder, arch consumed, civil. And this is the project file that I want to bring in. Again, see how the correct lines that are slightly off you want to make sure and uncheck that. Um, and you can you can leave this at auto detect. If you get some, if something doesn't seem to come in right, you can change it to feet. And this is the uh, by shared coordinates. So this is the one that I mentioned in the PowerPoint. Make sure your auto is set to by shared coordinates. 
And in, in this case, I'm bringing, uh, doing the place at on this O1 entry level. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck the orient to view. Everything else looks good. Uh, you can bring this uh, linked file in on only the current view. Uh, that's more of a Revit thing, so it doesn't show up on a bunch of sheets or something like that. I'm going to click OK. And so notice I didn't get any warning messages. I'm going to click OK. And let's see if it worked. Hey, it did. So you can see the uh, that one was the boundary. Actually, that wasn't, uh, I don't think it would bring it in there. I need to go to the orientation view, this one here. Some things are turned on and off uh, within views. So on this uh, coordination view with topography, manage links, I'm gonna go back to the CAD formats and let's see if it's, um, I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. Do not save. Okay, I click add, I bring it in again. Uncheck shared coordinates, entry level. Click OK. And I have to check my view graphics. This is where you can have fun with turning things on and off. Imported categories. Yep, that should be on. Well, it's not going to play nice today. Uh, but it should come in in the right spot using those shared coordinates. So if you do have something like that, so I do get to show you the trick after all. I'm going to go back to Civil and the architect's going to say, hey, it's not coming in, it's not working, do something else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to uh, bring in that X site again. Sure, yep, that looks good. And I'm gonna bring in the architecture drawing again. Share coordinate system. Should drop in exactly where I want. Yep. And I don't have the ortho lines in there. So I'm going to right click open. Polyline zero comma zero. Whoa. Oh, because that one's at the other the other coordinate system. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back to go back to the original one. Two more foot. Okay. Did bring it in at zero. So I'm going to specify coordinate on screen. Other ways you could do this. This is just one way. You could also bring it in with grid lines. All right. I'm gonna do an end copy. That's why I should have done this in the first place when I brought it in the first time. Detach that, detach that. All right, so now I have my coordinate system. So this is a cool little trick you can do. So I'm gonna copy that and in AutoCAD, because I exported the file to AutoCAD, uh, once I export it to AutoCAD, I don't open it in Civil 3D. I will only open it in AutoCAD. So if I do need to make any edits, um, purging or um, anything like that. Sorry, Screencast is going to try to grab my microphone. Uh, but when I do export a Civil 3D drawing to AutoCAD, if I need to make an edit to that file, I will only open it in AutoCAD just to make sure that it doesn't get uh, the Civil 3D content embedded again. 
Ooh, running short on time. Come on. All right, it's not going to play nice. Uh, but basically, what what you can do is set the UCS based on that internal coordinate system. And if you save the AutoCAD file using that custom uh, UCS, then when you bring it in and link it uh, through here, so if you were to uh, remove that and then add it back in, and you use the one with the custom UCS, instead of by shared coordinates, you would do origin to internal origin, and it'll actually drop in the right spot. And that works great for the CAD file. It does not work for the uh, shared uh, surface. So only have uh, five, 10 minutes. We can do this real quick. because there's only uh, one slide each. So publishing a civil 3D surface. In civil 3D, we're going to create separate export source drawings for each surface. I've already done that. And then you're going to open that source drawing and use the Collaborate Publish Surfaces tool. And you're going to uh, publish those to BIM 360. And then you would repeat that process for each of the export source drawings. Let's look at a quick demo. So this is a uh, Civil 3D finished ground surface. And I'm going to go to the Collaborate ribbon, Publish Surfaces. I'm going to pick the surface that I want to publish, make sure it has a check mark. I'm going to pick the three dots. And uh, pick the location that I want to share it. And I usually don't, uh, usually the drawing's not there by default, and I don't change the name. Uh, because the whatever this drawing name is, it's going to add dot shared dot dwg to the file name and it has to have that in the file name in order for this to work so actually if i do cancel and i click the three dots uh, you'll see that it's going to default to that drawing name dot shared dot dwg so i'm just going to click save and then click ok and pretty quick it has uploaded that file uh, it's actually created that file locally and it's uh, synchronizing up to BIM 360. So if I check my uh, desktop connector, check my pending actions, it's uploading that surface as we speak. It shouldn't take too long. It's not too big of a surface, but it does have a lot of uh, smoothing in it. So it may take it a moment. Let's see if AutoCAD, hey, AutoCAD is working now. So why share, oh. Project, architect, consumed. Oops, sorry, this was. Yeah, I'm gonna cut that into the shared version. Database file. So that's this one here. And you'll see that I have this one that's called uh, UCS. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna copy this. And instead of B site model, that way I know that this one has a UCS uh, assigned to it. Click OK. We'll go back to Civil 3D. Make sure my clipboard has the right content. Grab those two, copy that. Back to AutoCAD. Sorry about doing these out of order. These two original coordinates. And there's my coordinates. I'm going to type UCS, press enter, E for element. And I'm going to pick that line that's to make sure the origin X and Y are correct. I typically like to do. Uh, plan enter twice, but it'll be fine. So go ahead and save that drawing because now the UCS is set uh, the same as the uh, internal origin. And 
if I go back to Revit, close Revit, and do the manage links, bring it in, and I would use the uh, internal coordinates. Let's see if that's done. It's done. All right. So the uh, Civil 3D portion of publishing the shared coordinate is complete. We would do uh, linking a published file. So the next step would be to open Revit and create the collaboration view that shows the typographic elements. And then we're gonna link the topography in for each of the ones in the drawing. All right, so back to Revit. And this is the uh, coordination view. And if I turn on VG, scroll down to the bottom here, you'll see that topography is turned on. And if you bring this in, topography is not turned on. It doesn't, uh, doesn't work. You can't see it. Site, set current, that looks good. And uh, in the manage ribbon, we're gonna do manage links again, go back to topography. And you'll see that I've already loaded it. Uh, what I did is I just clicked add and I wait for it to, uh, show me the surfaces that I can bring in. That's why I went ahead and brought it in. So it's a little bit of pause while it reads those files. And um, once I bring it in, I'm just gonna do a reload. If it'll let me here. Always fun when uh, CAD decides to start thinking. Oh, I guess I made it mad. Fix it, Adam, fix it. <laughs> That's basically the most step. <laughs> in, in this case, I was just gonna reload the surface and uh, you would be able to see the surface uh, in the background there. So it would show this surface, you know, actually at elevation. So any questions? Sorry, I didn't leave you a lot of time for Q and A. Well, are Josh you having to stick with? <laughs> are you having to uh, stick with INS units of two to look with with to work with Revit, or are you able to use U.S. Survey feet? I don't know that U.S. Survey feet will get you the same result. There may be a shift. I, I would have to test it on individual file. A good question. Anything else? Created. Ready to do this, Adam? Uh, ready to start using it. <laughs> I I'm ready. It's just, are my clients ready? Are the architects right. really ready? Yep. Uh, um, so I would say, the, um, to give an example, we had a project where there was an issue with the finished ground <coughs> surface and the bottom of the structural um, content, uh, without saying the wrong words, uh, but there was a gap between the bottom of the structural and the top of the finished grade. And we were having issues trying to see that using other methods of creating a surface in Revit. But when we use the uh, BIM 360 surface, like it, you see the actual same surface that we see. So it, it made a, a huge difference uh, in them being able to visualize <clears throat> stuff. Uh, previously, they were going, we need more spot elevations and, and stuff like that. So they were literally trying to verify their footers on the, the structural design based on you know, spot elevations on a grading plan, which is not really sufficient along the edge of a building that's, you know, on the side of a cliff to, to be able to do those type calculations. So that's where I see the most benefit for doing the civil 3D surface. So anyway, any, if you do a uh, land XML import through site designer in Revit, uh, it basically re-triangulates the whole thing, but it, it ignores break lines, basically. So if you have something that's a vertical face, like a, 
like inside of a pond or something like that. Uh, or any kind of a structural wall or, or something where you have a drop in an elevation, you're not going to be able to see that. All right. Well, thanks, Tom, for presenting. It was a great presentation. A few people have already expressed their thanks down in the chat if you want to read that later. Oh, great. Thank you. Awesome. Um, Sorry, that was, it was a lot to get through. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, Somehow I got to get that down to 30 minutes for my AU presentation. So <laughs> that's well, going to be good. tough. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to wrap yeah. up the recording. And, okay. Sounds uh, great.